Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to presenting your cardiac patient in five steps. I'm Kate Morgan, and I'm a general cardiology inpatient nurse practitioner. So I decided to make this video to actually help my nurse practitioner students with their presentation skills. This is uh, the first of what I hope will be a series of videos which will guide you through different uh, cardiac complaints. The first video will go through a simple case of chest pain in order to easily point out these five steps. I also want to point out that this presentation is geared for the real world working environment uh, where we need to communicate with our attending and preceptors efficiently. So here I want to talk about a few basic principles. It's easy to get lost in a sea of details given to us by our patients, but we have to take what they tell us and streamline it into a set of pertinent points. Your presentation skills should be organized in a thoughtful way. In the beginning, you'll need to write this out um, until it becomes more natural. The second point is to remember why you're being consulted to begin with. Certainly your history of physical will be more detailed, uh, but your presentation should be pretty focused. Your attending or preceptor will surely ask you follow-up questions and details, uh, but your job is to provide a succinct briefing. The third point is once you have a diagnosis in mind, you will need to present it accordingly to make your case for this diagnosis. So let's go through an example. So step one, we're going to describe the patient in one sentence. Again, your attending and your preceptor, you know, they don't have a lot of time uh, to sit and have long discussions. You're on the go. You need to, you know, make your point and your case pretty quickly. So I like to sum it up in one sentence that really tells um, my attending quickly what's uh, going on. So here you're going to include the age, gender, significant past medical history, or you could include cardiac risk factors and the chief complaint. So here is an example. And this example is what I'm going to use uh, throughout the presentation. And again, this is just a very simple, easy to follow, uh, chest pain, non-complicated patient to get us started with this, um, this format of five steps. So I'm going to start off with my attending. Hey, I have this 58-year-old male with cardiac risk factors for age, hypertension, former smoker, presented to the ED with left-sided exertional chest pain. So that tells you right away um, a certain picture that you're going to get in your mind um, with this presentation. And this is a good time to point out what are our cardiac risk factors. Um, that's number one thing your cardiologist is going to ask you as a student. Cardiac risk factors are male if you're age 55 or older, female if you're age 65 or older, smoker, hypertension, dyslipidemia, diabetes, obesity, family history of early cardiac disease in a first degree relative. That means mom, dad, brother, or sister. Again, following the age um, uh, markers as already mentioned. So here again is step one. You're gonna describe the patient in one quick sentence. All right, so let's move to step two. Now you're going to go in and describe the patient's story again briefly. The patient will go on and on and tell you a lot of, you know, unpertinent details, but here you're going to really streamline the story and put it together in a nice quick package. So now to keep going on about our 58 uh, year old male with chest pain, we're going to talk about his story a little bit. 
So he noticed mild, left-sided, squeezing chest pain since last week during his usual walk around the neighborhood. He normally goes for a brisk walk about three miles, five days a week. Today he presented to the ED with worsening chest pain which radiated to his jaw and associated with shortness of breath while walking up a hill. So I'm really presenting my case for exertional chest pain. Um, I've already pointed out what his risk factors are and um, you know, giving a little more details about his story. So especially when you have to document your history in physical, when you're talking about chest pain, you have to document certain qualifiers, uh, which is going to be where is the chest pain, what is the quality of the chest pain, does it radiate anywhere, what makes it worse, what makes it better, uh, those type of things. So here you're just going to point out the pertinent uh, parts of the story that makes your case for what you think the diagnosis is. All right, so step three. Step three, you're going to state the treatment and diagnosis that has already, I'm sorry, diagnostics that have already been done. So with this example, we're talking about a patient that has come into the emergency department, uh, they've been seen by the emergency department uh, physician or um, nurse practitioner or physician assistant. Uh, so we're kind of starting off fresh here. They're coming in with the certain type of complaint. And now we'll talk about, well, what has um, the EMS that brought him in or the emergency department? What have they already done with this patient? So continuing on with our example. Um, we'll say he has received aspirin and one sublingual nitroglycerin by EMS with complete relief of pain. In the emergency department, he has had one normal troponin, a normal chest x-ray, an EKG with inferior T-wave inversions, but stable vital signs. So here, of course, depending on what your chief complaint is, um, you'll talk about different diagnostic tests uh, that were done. So, uh, yeah, so again, so EMS gave him sublingual nitroglycerin, and what was the response to that medication? Now he's pain free. And again, what has the emergency department workup consisted of? And you list that there. So now let's go to step four. Oops, sorry. Here you're going to discuss your physical exam home medication, social history, substance abuse, any previous cardiac uh, workup. Here, again, this is going to be very brief and only if it's really pertinent to your story. So, for example, with this gentleman, I'm going to say his physical exam is unremarkable. He's on lisinopril for hypertension. He quit smoking in 2000 with a 20-pack year history and he has not had any prior cardiac workup. Um, here too, I'll mention if the patient is a long-standing uh, patient of ours, I will mention that, let's say if it's more of a complicated patient, um, I will list that, well, this patient was seen uh, by one of our cardiologists, and when was the last date of the office visit, and what has he been evaluated for, and if there's any details of testing. But this is a very brief, simple um, example. Um, all right, so that's step four. Let's go on to step five. So here's the last step where you're going to discuss your differential diagnosis and what you plan to do. So after you've given your whole story uh, to your attending or your preceptor, they're going to want to know, okay, so you've given me this story. Now, what do you think? What are your um, differential diagnoses in your mind? And uh, how do you want to proceed with this patient? Do you think they need to be admitted? Can they go home? Do we need to do a stress test? You know, so here we'll continue with our example. Mr. Smith likely has new onset unstable angina and will need to be observed overnight with serial cardiac enzymes, lipid panel, and cardiac stress testing if troponins are negative. I will put him on daily aspirin 
as needed sublingual nitroglycerin and continue his home medication of lisinopril. So this is really telling your attending or your preceptor that you've really thought about this whole presentation um, and you've come to this conclusion. This is what you think the diagnosis is and this is what you, what you uh, would like to proceed with. Now, you may not always be right. The attending may ask you some more questions to clarify um, you know, your assessment uh, or uh, questions about uh, the patient's story and there may be something that you know, you're not thinking of, but that's all part of the learning process. Um, so again, here is five steps that you need to go through um, to present to your attending or your preceptor. So I want to thank you for your attention, and um, I hope to continue to make some more videos on different um, patient complaints and scenarios. And thank you, and see you in the next video.